Hello guys, gals, and non-binary pals. On today's episode, I'm going to paint a miniature abandoned car for your urban miniatures war games and post-apocalyptic mayhem. I constructed this piece of modern tabletop gaming terrain using a toy car that I bought at Walgreens and a scrap piece of XPS insulation foam. The base here is an inch high. So now on this one, I guess we're gonna do red sports car. And for that, I'm gonna do uh, Vampire Vampire Red by uh, Army Painter. Vampire. For this, uh, I did have some struggle issues with getting an even coat of this red on the black primer. Um, it seemed like the paint just wanted to, the product wanted to take the rest of the product off and I couldn't get an even coat. One of the problems I think is that I used a black primer. Um, I think if I had primed in a pink, which is something I learned later on, like a hot pink, that it, I would have had a better time with the coverage. Here we can compare and contrast the two different brands of paint I used. On the left, the blue is Citadel. On the right is the Army Painter. Now it's not really fair to compare two different colors, but I just wanted to show that it is possible to get decent coverage with these paints. Even with my second coat of Army Painter, the product was pulling off the existing paint. So I was not too pleased with this. So I think two ways to avoid this problem in the future is just to go ahead and get an inexpensive can of spray paint and use that instead of army painter or to go ahead and base coat in a hot pink. Now I was thinking in my head, I may want to paint these rocks to match the concrete bits that I just did. But until I make that decision, plates are pretty much the I think it'll just tie in. I think I'm gonna try and paint them to match these bits right here. Cause I think it'll just tie in. Subtly. Essentially what I'm doing here with the burnt umber paint is breaking up the monotony of this dark brown with the burnt umber color. I like to use a variety of colors on my nature scenes because nature isn't just one solid color. She's got uh, millions of colors up plus. Go. Here's our burnt umber. And the next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna add some yellows and this crimson red lake, which I think is really funny. So we have the crimson red lake, which I like to call crimson red tide. I'm gonna put some of that on there. Little spots. So here's our three colors now. And this crimson red lake is gonna look a lot like our vampire. I just want to do little bits here and there. Okay, now let's see how I got a little too much red here. So we're just going to blend that out.
I like to add a variety of colors to my scenes, and I know this may seem a little strange adding in a yellow ochre, or you could use a bright sunshine yellow, or this ripe tomato red, or even the burnt umber, I guess, kind of makes sense. But um, uh, trust, it'll all work out when I add the dry brush at the end. And you can substitute any other color you want if you don't want to go for these deserty, kind of dusty, crusty. Feel free to go ahead and use another complete different color palette if you'd like. The red rum, red car, which I really didn't have a lot of problem getting an even coat with that red. But whatever. The wash, the wash, I think it looks great on the blue. Um, it just made the red, which is still drying, so it looks a little shiny there, but it just, uh, I don't know. I just don't really know if I like that red paint. Let me paint her. Curse you. So I did toss a little bit of gray storm on here. I finally managed to get a somewhat even coat of this red, this army painter red that I was struggling with. But got it evenish after I did the wash, of course. Territorial beige. Territorial beige. And I'm going to use my uh, loose powder brush, which is a new trick that I learned about. Here you can see how nice and smooth that is. The skin. So for that, use territorial beige. Okay, here's the other piece. I'm going to do the same for this. Oops, I hit the gray. Oops, I should not have done that, but oh well. Then I'm gonna Oops. So on this one, I'm going to take antique parchment, brownish color on there, so let's see what happens. I think it's giving it a nice dusty, crusty, dusty, musty look, and I am liking it. Dusty, dusty, crusty, dusty, musty look. And I'm gonna try a little bit of strong tone. Let's see what happens. Just tone that down a little bit. So I feel like I'm a little crazy with that one. what I've got done so far the dry brushing um, the wash dry brushing is much more obvious on this one I went a little too heavy on here but I'm gonna leave it it looks deserty and dusty I also hit these rocks I hit the sponge foo rocks and I think we're good to go with our train pieces Thank you for tuning in. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and hit that notification bell. Thank you very much and have a good one.